Yes, Mr. Valeric. As the court pleases, my lord, the state calls the next witness is Mr. Chu Pie, Christopher Matlo. I, I, I don't know if we're going to revisit the issues that uh, cropped up on, on, on Wednesday. Yeah, no, we will. We uh, okay. I just wanted to know who, who's the next witness. It's, it's uh, Mr. Chu Pie, Christopher Chuke. Chu Pie is C H Chu Pie. Yes, C H U P Y yeah. E Christopher Matlow. Yeah. Yeah, but before we start, as you know, <coughs> you, have, you have assumed correctly On Wednesday, is it? On Wednesday, in this court, I made certain comments or utterances arising from the conduct of this trial and subsequently because of the news flashes I came to know that uh, the Black Lawyers Association apparently is saying that it wants to arrange a meeting with me or to meet me. I don't have a problem with that, but the law precludes me from meeting the black lawyers because they want to have a meeting with me regarding my presiding in a case which is continuing and they are not parties to those to that case. The parties to the case are the five gentlemen here and who are represented by five councils and attorneys. And the state represented by Mr. Sebanda and Mr. Baloui. I'm sure we all know that uh, a judge is supposed to Execute his functions without fear, favor, or prejudice. And that is got to be independent, objective, in the exercise of his authority in court. Consequently, judicial protocol and the law itself does not allow a judge during the presiding of a case which is continuing and is not yet finalized to meet with a body or persons and have a discussion on any matter whatsoever which arises from the conduct of the case. The law does not permit that. Actually, if I did that, the accused before court here, they could bring an application for my recusal because they wouldn't be present in that meeting which the Black Lawyers Association wants to have with me. They could even also apply for the quashing of the proceedings on the basis that they are unconstitutional for me having entertained a discussion with a legal fraternity body. So that is the reason. But me, on reflection, and after some thoughts, I admit that my comments could be interpreted as intemperate, 
ill-advised, ill-considered, and offensive. And if that is the perception of the accused and their representatives and persons outside, even the, the public and the, the BLA, then I want to state that I unreservedly, without any conditions, withdraw the comments which I made in that Wednesday afternoon because of the events that played out here. And also, if I caused any offense to any person or organization, I also unreservedly apologize. And I also apologize also to the judge president of this division, Mr. Mlambo, and the DJP of this division, Mr. Aubrey Letuaba, and if needs be also the Chief Justice, the judiciary, my colleagues, and even the Judicial Service Commission. And as an aside, the irony is the BLA, I, together with the late Godfrey Piche, Gikhang Museneke, Sien Mushidi, Makambeni from Pretoria, Toli Vilagazi, Tansi, I think we were about 10. We conceptualized in 1977, 50 years ago, when the spirit of black consciousness was pervading the country, we conceptualized and formed the Black Lawyers Association. And I can brag a bit and say, I was in the steering committee. I and Museneke drafted the Constitution. So I've been a member of the Black, Conscious, uh, Black Lawyers Association since 1977 for the uninitiated. Okay. They're free, the Black Lawyers Association is free to write to the JP and discuss the matter. But as far as I'm concerned, that is the end of the matter. Except that Mr. Mgumezulu has written a letter of apology. Should I read it, sir? That's correct. Should I read it? Yes, please. Otherwise, I was just going to keep it to myself. <coughs> okay, here's the letter. It's dated the 20th March, 2024, at 1621. Good day, Judge Mokwachim. The above matter refers. Senzo Maiwa made a trial, Pretoria High Court, not right, not outing. I write this email to express my apology for my non-appearance in court. I had discussions with my colleagues last Friday whereby I asked Advocate Munyeki to stand in for me during the testimonies of Ms. Matlapi and the photographer. The request was adhered to by Advocate Munyeki. On Monday, I asked Mr. Ramosipiri to stand in for me and he agreed in the presence of other counsels. I received instructions on an urgent basis between wherein 74 motor vehicles were impounded, repossessed by the company called Bike Automatic Automobile SAPTY LTD. I took this opportunity because I was not receiving fees for the past five months and Legal Aid South Africa declined to pay. I need to close the unpaid school fees for my daughter and my two sons and my house bond. Today at 16.15 I called Mr. Baloi. He did not answer my call, but due to his professionalism he returned my call and we had a discussion. However, before Advocate Baloi returned my call, I called Ras Ramos Lipidi and sent him a WhatsApp message, but he did not respond. Furthermore, I called Advocate Mushololo, who also did not answer my call, but showed professionalism by retaining my call at 9.30. I then asked her to speak to Ms. Selepe, whom I conveyed the message for the judge. I attempted to call the secretary, Ms. Rose Selepe, and I left a message. I do not have anything against your leadership, since I have known you from Clemson House. I was on the fourth floor with Norman Masanabo, the late. 
I did not receive the transcript of the main trial and I have not consulted with accused one. I ran a trial within a trial without going through the evidence of the main trial and I'm proceeding <coughs> with the main trial only with 636 stroke 10 stroke 2014 disclosure. That is the case. I have noticed that other councils are offered assistance if they are engaged somewhere else, but different situation in, in my case. Kindly find room to accept my apology. I do not have any vendetta against your lordship. Regards to Lani Ngumezu. Okay. That's fine. Thanks. I regard the matter as closed. Yes, sir. Mr. Baloi. Manje Geboba Banga Pamgo Uti Snakala. In Ganton is Okumbulu to be in a Jablanga Utunum Zango Mezulu Agafang in Ganton. Manje in Gandolo E.T. Loko Umanga because we say Unoma Oban. So, E.T. Akodis. Gagan Sakumanga Bobo and Kelabante would in Gandolo say Bashi. Manje Nomnum Zango Mezulu, Sanda Kodisa, Galen Wat lay Funda in Gandolo Manje. Uti Ulel Kala. Safi so kuti akubege, futi agana yo indo e guti impete gabi. Uguya ngalendlela e guti inkantolo ya egate ikulme nga kona, kalo guti singa kubega. Inkantolo na yo iti lelo tala, lelo tabala lango le statu i alvala, shukuti siya kubega nge tala. As the court please. Yeah, okay, yes, Mr. As the court please, my lord, before calling this witness, I just want to amplify the relevance of this witness um, evidence. Yeah. <clears throat> My Lord, this witness works for the Road Traffic Management Corporation as an investigator. He has access to what is known as the NATIS system. Okay. Th this is the National Traffic Information System. Mm. Now, the National Traffic Information System contains particulars of the registered owners of motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. It gives their contact details. It also gives their addresses. Now, this witness is going to testify about the um, computer-generated extracts from the NATIS system and my lord the sole purpose of presenting this evidence is to refute the version of case number one um, this witness is going to testify that and, and, and show those extracts of the application that was made by Accused number one for a learner license, and this information was then captured on the NATIS system. Mm. And, and as I've intimated, my lord, um, this is to refute the version of the following version of accused number one during the evidence of <coughs> Mr. Zungu, as a Zungu, on the 8th of September 2023, <coughs> page 27 to 28, the following was put by Mr. Ramosepeli, and I'm going to refer to line 18. <coughs> Mr. Ramosepele, accused one will state that in 2013 until March 2013, he was staying in Foslores Hostel at Basitouni section, but when he lost employment in March 2013, he returned home and stayed home until he returned again to stay with his uncle in Tembisa in 2015. Uh, then proceeding to page 28, uh, Mr. Ramosepele then asked Mr. Zungu to comment. Uh, then Mr. Zungu says the following, I would not know where he was working, 
when he lost his employment, we have never discussed that. Now, my lord, the following is very important. Mr. Ramosepili says the following. The basis of that proposition to you is essentially this, that since March 2013, he has never returned to Johannesburg or Gauteng until 2015. Uh, th that is the nub of the uh, matter, my lord. And the state will then present evidence via this witness that shows that um, accused number one did apply for a learner license in person at mm -hmm. Brackburn Drivers License Testing Center, and the acronym DLTC is often used. On the 17th of July, 2014, that he then undertook the the uh, learner's test on the 22nd of July, 2014, but unfortunately he did not make it. That he then, on the same day, the 17th of July, 2014, I'm sorry, on the 22nd of July 2014, made another appointment at the Boxback License, uh, License Testing Center, Boxback DLTC. As I indicated, this is now on the 22nd of July 2014. And he then secured an appointment for the 15th of September 2014 to sit for the learner license. And that on the 15th of September 2014, he then passed his learner's. Mm. I'm not sure if the leading evidence. state is leading evidence. Yeah, it's, <coughs> he says he's, he's telling the court and even you as counsels what he intends leading this witness upon. Yes. So the evidence will be led according to him by Mr. The same name by the way is Mr. It's <coughs> Mr. Matlo. 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 M-A-T-L-O-U Matlo. Yeah, Matlo. You know the Matro, who was a member of the Gang of Eight? Oh, you don't know him? Okay, no, fine. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. The, there was, there's an objection there. Yeah, yes, my lord. I, I, as I said, you know, I'm just with a broad brush just outlining the relevance of this witness uh, evidence. And uh, I, I, I've covered that aspect. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. Okay. And we'll then refer to Section 17 of the National Road Traffic Act, 93 of 96, that says a person must apply for a learner license in person. As there's a certain questionnaire <coughs> that the applicant must complete regarding the the, the, the health status. Now, during his evidence, my lord, we also traverse the um, certain infringement notices that were issued to some of the um, accused. And the sole purpose thereof, my lord, is simply to show that the accused were stopped whilst driving the particular motor vehicles by a traffic officer. Yes, yes. Sorry, my lord, I'm going to do the same objection that my lord yes. colleague. Yeah, maybe, maybe just did the yes. witness. Yes, yes. I, I, as I say, uh, I, I foresee that there'll be an objection, and I'm just trying to explain the reason why, uh, and just so that everybody <coughs> can follow the evidence, my lord. Uh, this is not giving evidence. I'm just outlining the evidence so that everybody can follow it. Uh, What's your objection, Mr. Ramosepidi? My Lord, the summation that my learned colleague is giving comes from the affidavit of the witness. Is the witness so? uh, will testify about that. Is it's that so? 
I've read the affidavits, man. So what's the problem? I thought you didn't know what this witness was going to say. But so you know what this witness is going to shouldn't say? Shouldn't the evidence come from the witness? No, no, I'm saying... I do know. You know? Yes. Okay. They say they know. Uh, I'm almost done, my lord. <laughs> uh, and, and the state is then, as far as this computer-generated printouts are concerned, the state will be relying on um, the, the act that governs the, uh, the printouts and it's the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act 25 of 2002. There's also a decided case, my lord, of uh, Njovu versus Minister of uh, Correctional Services. It's the decision, decision of the then uh, with Water Strength Local Division given by um, Judge Gauchi. The procedure is totally wrong. Mr. Maloy, uh, my colleague, Advocate Maloy, just needs to lead this witness. In an okay, event fine. that there's an objection, then he can respond. It yeah. is unnecessary for him now to even, before this witness begin to profess testimony, to refer this court to a particular authority. Okay, okay. That will only come if and when there's an objection with regard to the testimony of this witness. Okay. Otherwise, the presence of this witness here it will be rendered very nugatory if Mr. Valoy persists on this matter. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not evidence. Anyway, just did the witness. Uh, so uh, the witness in. Uh, uh, as a court, please, my lord, can I just make this point? In terms of section 150, at the beginning of the of, yeah, you of, 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 of you relay the state the can lay out mm, yeah, I know the that. basis of the case and during the presentation of mm. the evidence of any witness. There's mm. nothing that stops Maybe let's read section 150. Evidence. Let's read uh, it. Yes, but because maybe some of us don't know it. That, that relates mainly to the opening statement. Yes, yes, I know. Um, <sighs> right. Uh, the section reads as follows. <coughs> Prosecutor may address court and adduce evidence. There's a heading. The prosecutor may at any trial before any evidence is adduced mm. address the court for the purpose of explaining the charge and indicating without comment to the court what evidence he intends adducing in, su in support of the charge. Then subsection two, the prosecutor may then examine the witness for the prosecution and adduce evidence as may be admissible to prove that the accused committed the offense referred to in the charge or that he committed an offense of which he, he may be now that's convicted enough. of the that's charge. Enough. Yes. The first portion covers, it, covers what you're yes. saying. Is that not so, Mr. Ramosipiri? Hello? <coughs> Section 150 covers what this gentleman has been saying here. Try and lead the following evidence. My, my, my understanding of the section, uh, unfortunately, this is written in a very small faint. It says, uh, without comment to the court, what evidence... No, no, start the section from where it starts. Okay. The prosecutor may at any trial, right. before any evidence is uh, adduced, address the court for the purposes of explaining the charge and, indi in, and indicating without comment to the court uh, what evidence he intends producing in support of the charge mm. without commenting mm. that's what i'm underlining my note and also this process is done at the commencement of the trial not when a witness is seated before court okay okay yes, uh, 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 <coughs> uh, 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 i'm done my lord just yeah. explaining i was just showing the relevance of this okay right, it's quite clear thank you <coughs> uh, your full name is name I'm to be Christopher Batlow. Do you have any objection in taking the prescribed oath? I have no objection. If you do not have, do you swear that the evidence you shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing else but the truth? If you do swear, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Witness, Sonny, my Lord. 
this coming to the front. My lord, this witness is going to make use of uh, his affidavits. He has made two affidavits and he's going to refer to um, his affidavits, my lord. Uh, this will be in terms of the section 212, subsection 3 of the Criminal Procedure Act. And section, if my learned friend can just give me time to finish, as well as uh, section <laughs> 15 of the Electronic Communication and Transaction Act yeah, okay. 25 of 2002. 25 of 2002? Yes. Mm. Section 15, my lord. <coughs> yes, Mr. Ngamalo. My lord, I have a problem because when, when my colleague uh, addressed the court, he referred to accused number one. Hence, this uh, evidence, the evidence of this witness also relate to my client, of which, my, my Lord, I object on the basis that the evidence that is going to be tendered by this witness in respect of my client is irre irrelevant. It does not address the core issues in this case. Hence, we are dealing with the matter in relation to the five counts as per the indictment. Thank you. You say the evidence you want to adduce? From this, uh, maybe my Lord, um, I do not intend to to hijack the stage. Um, Mr. Baloyi, in his address, informed the court that the testimony of this witness will only have an effect on accused number one. Mm. Yeah, he said so. Thank you, my Lord. Yeah. Yes. Are you going to no, also need no, evidence no, against no. accused number four? No, no. Uh, I'm actually taken aback at these objections. Yeah. I was interrupted, my lord, when I was still trying oh, to apply to to number four. the relevance of the evidence. Okay. Now, they are saying the relevance hasn't been shown when they stopped me from showing the relevance. It's yeah, uh, but uh, uh, no, 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 just but, listen to me. But, but you intend leading evidence against number four? All, all the accused, my lord. Okay, all the accused. Yes. Let's, all let's, the accused. Let's, let's start, please. Regarding the cell phone numbers, yeah, fine. that links up with the evidence of uh, Colonel Stain, as, as well as the addresses that they gave. Okay. Because if the, if the evidence is irrelevant, you counsel, through cross-examination, you will demonstrate that. If he says the rain falls mainly on the plains of Ikobo, and for the past hundred years there was no rain there. That's it. Yes. Yes, let's, let's, let's continue. As a God please, my Lord. As I've indicated, the witness has made two uh, statements which are covered in terms of section 212. Yeah. Subsection three, three of the Criminal Procedure Act, right. um, as well as Section 15 of the Electronic Communications Act okay. that, that I've referred to, my lord. Okay. Thank you. The witness is also going to make use of um, the screen to do his presentations. Okay. Um, if, if the system allows it, you will uh, drill into the um, NATIS system and and to, just to demonstrate his uh, his evidence. Okay, fine. And perhaps for the convenience of the court, we've also um, begged leave to hand the two affidavits that he's going to use, um, just to make it easier for the court to follow the evidence as well. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Ufagazi uzo boni suguti um umsolo kala waiga te kona na banye ukono kunye ofsazo boni su. There's also my lord uh, Volkswagen Polo that featured in the confessions. Um, the evidence of this witness will traverse a, a, a vehicle of that make, my lord. Okay. Nale moto EVW ego kunyenga yonga leskati bukonyuluga. 
kutwa na yo ubufaka zibayo buzo bona kaliswa ukuthi leo modwe kabani eyani ni kanjalo bonke ubufaka zibake buchaza imininingwane yonke yomuntu oke wasebenzisa i license noma umuntu oshayela he has been so yes Mr. Matlow, is it correct? Yes, my lord. That you have prepared two affidavits that I want to show you. Uh, the first one consists of 22 pages. And this. Uh, I think I can allow this to continue on a bit. Yeah, what's the objection? Mr. Baloy, even before this witness starts to testify, he ends. He, 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 he ends he, he hands in an affidavit that is purported to have been written by this witness. Now, a section 212 affidavit simply replaces the oral testimony of this witness. But if the witness is there, then there's no need for that 212 affidavit unless Mr. Baloyi intends to introduce to the court even before the testimony of this witness the, 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 the documents as annexed charts that are attached to the affidavit. But the affidavit itself should not be handed over to the court when the witness is here. Yes, Mr. Baloyi, what do you say? <laughs> well, my lord... Um, 212, uh, what does 212 uh, say? Yeah, uh, I, I should maybe um, <laughs> read, read section 212, uh, subsection 3. And it reads as follows. Whenever in criminal proceedings yes. the question arises whether any matter has been registered under any law or whether any fact or transaction has been recorded there under or whether anything connected therewith has been done there under a document purporting to be an affidavit made by the person who in that affidavit alleges that he is the person upon whom the law in question confers the powers or imposes the duty to register such matter or to report such fact or transaction or to do anything connected therewith and that he has registered the matter in question or that he has recorded the facts or transaction in question or that he has done the thing connected therewith or that he has satisfied himself that the matter in question or that he has done the thing connected therewith or that he has satisfied himself that the matter in question was registered or that or that the effect or transaction in question was recorded or that the thing connected therewith was done shall upon its mere production at such proceedings be prima facie proof that such matter was registered or as the case may be that such fact or transaction was recorded or that the thing connected therewith was done. Mm. Uh, but there's nothing my lord that stops the, uh, the, the affidavit is by mere production admissible but there's nothing prima that stops facie. the state to lead viva voca evidence. This happened with the pathologist, there was no objection when the pathologist, yeah. my lord, read his affidavit in the in the record, and just there's a difference, uh, my lord. This witness is not an expert. Well, it's just a mere <laughs> witness that comes from inatives. He's not an expert. So that's the difference are, are you, between are you, saying, are you agreeing that this witness is not an expert? Well, well, the state is going to contend that he's an expert in okay. the inatives system. The contend is an expert. Yeah, he's an investigator attached to the RTMC, and that um, he's an expert on uh, the inatives system. But. Yeah, you can bring evidence to dispute that. Yes. Um, no problem. Can I also perhaps just for clarity also put section 15 of the um, <coughs> Electronic Communication Act on, on record so that we are all on the, um, on, 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 on the same page. And it reads as follows admissibility and 
evidential weight of data messages. Mm. And data messages, my lord, is defined in section one um, as data generated, sent, received, or stored by electronic means and includes A, voice, where the voice is used in an automated transaction, and B, this is the one that we are relying on, a stored record. Now, the, the section itself reads as follows, section uh, 15. The heading is admissibility and evidential weight of data messages. Subsection 15.1. In any legal proceedings, the rules of evidence must not be applied so as to deny the admissibility of a data message in evidence. A. On the mere ground that it is constituted by a data message. Or B. If it is in the best evidence or sorry, if it is the best evidence that the person <coughs> adducing it could reasonably be expected to obtain on the grounds that it is not in its original form. Subsection two, information in the form of data message must be given due evidential weight. Subsection three, in assessing the evidential weight of a data message, regard must be had to A, the reliability of the manner in which the data message was generated, stored, or communicated. B, the reliability of the manner in which the integrity of the data message was maintained. C, the manner in which its originator was identified. And D, any other relevant factor. Then lastly, sub uh, subsection 4, a data message made by a person in the ordinary course of business or a copy or printout, printout of or an extract from such data message certified to be correct by an officer in the service of such person is on its mere production in any civil criminal, administrative, or disciplinary proceedings under any law, the rules of self-regulatory organization, or any other law, or the common law, admissible in evidence against any person, and rebuttable proof of the facts contained in such record, copy, printout, or extract. That is section 15. Okay. If we can then maybe uh, proceed with the evidence of the witness. Yes, let's hear you. Uh, um, Mr. Mato, um, you've indicated that you've deposed to two affidavits regarding the matter. Is that correct? That is correct, my lord. You can also affidavit I just want to show you your first affidavit consisting of 22 pages. Professor Bukboni says affidavit ya kuyo kala ena ma page out 22. And if I can draw your attention to the last page, page 22 of that affidavit. See again, go page 22, ya leo affidavit. Or maybe if we can start at page 21. Page 21. There's a signature there. Whose signature is that? It? It's my signature, my lord. And the next page, page 22, the affidavit was com was uh, commissioned. Is that correct? That is correct, my lord. What is the date thereof? The 9th of October 2023. Go page 22. I date it is October 2023. Are you the one who prepared this affidavit? Yes, my lord. You confirm that. When I'm going to Oyenzela after the affidavit to Tiebo, 
do you confirm its correctness? Yes, my lord. If you can draw your attention to the next affidavit that consists of 27 pages. If I can ask you to refer to page 25 of 27. There appears a signature there. Whose signature is that? It's my signature, my lord. Whose signature la pe gabano teyami? And the following page, twenty-six and twenty-seven, the affidavit was commissioned. Is that correct? Yes, my lord. And what is the date on which it was commissioned? Twenty-third of September. La. Which year? Twenty twenty-three, my lord. The affidavit guna la puti ya trishizwa istembe ya commissioniwa uti yebo ni ni uti nge 23 siga September nyage But we will return to these two affidavits which is in a while If we can just put This is the court, my lord Before this witness starts to prefer his testimony I would like to place it on record that this affidavit were already commissioned on the 9th of September 2023. The other one was commissioned on 22 September 2023, last year. We only received this information on Thursday, I mean on, on Wednesday. I also love the state to put it on record why from 23 September 2023, and 9 uh, October 2023, this information was not made available to us. I'm there on those pages. I would object that this information, uh, that this witness should be proceeded with unless the state brings out reasons why this information was not disclosed then. Otherwise, this will constitute a trial by ambush it constitutes a trial that is not fair to this accused person's man. The state has been in possession of this document for almost six months. If my, if my calculations are, are correct. You only gave them to us on Wednesday. Thank you. Yes, yes, I have. Well, look, I, I really do not wish to cast aspersions on my colleagues, but this thing of, you know, I've given you documents and they say they haven't received it. My lord, last year, before we started with the evidence of the tracker expert, I personally came to this court, found my colleagues sitting here in court consulting, and I gave them this um, affidavit. There's two affidavits. Yeah, um, I, I remember in particular the, the one affidavit, my lord. I, I'm not so you gave sure them about last this. year to? Yes, last year. Yeah, and, they say they got them Thursday. And out of courtesy, my lord, just out of sheer courtesy, because we know that these things are misplaced, we then gave them again the same affidavit when? that I personally gave to them here in court last year. Um, uh, I think Mr. Dupree's evidence was around um, October, thereabouts. Um, I personally gave them this affidavit. And I, as I say, my lord, I, I really don't want to enter into a debate where we, um, you know, we cast our specials at each other, but um, I give my way so to the to court. The state, the court. I did the, the, personally. Personally, give yes. them last give, year? Yes. Give not them Thursday, this. not Thursday. No. Well, Thursday, as I say, just out of courtesy, we know that other it, copies. it's a long time ago, and I again gave them this affidavit. And Mr. Mnisi said on, 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 on Wednesday he's ready. <laughs> He's ready he to proceed. He on said Friday. we must postpone the case to today and not to Monday because he's ready. Now he's ready. He's saying, but he, 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 you know, he didn't have enough time to, to go through the affidavit. As it is, the court, man. It's not a matter of trying to cast some aspersions. Uh, it's a matter of procedure. It is true that on Wednesday I indicated that we'll be ready to proceed today. But I was not aware that we'd be confronted with information that we should have received 
already last year. Okay, fine. So and I can tell the court, Mr. Mr. Nisi, that if Mr. my Nisi. memory is not bad, I never yeah, received Nisi, this wait, record. Wait, wait. And I cannot stand up here and mislead the court and say, we did, I did not have this information when I actually received them. Maybe my colleagues received them. I'm speaking on behalf of myself, who's representing accused number three. I never received this information. Sorry, Mr. Did you give it to each and every of yes, the represent yes. each and every one? Yes, in the fact, in fact, on that day, the investigating officer personally brought it in the morning. We made copies, Aye. and we then uh, brought the copies along. And she sits here, and she can vouch to that, my lord. Yes, uh, then is that uh, the sergeant? Uh, no. Mohola. Mohola. Yeah, she was in court. Yeah. It looks like oh, she's, she's not here. out. And she's not here. She is yeah. on the court. Oh, okay. You say yeah. she, she brought, she, she brought the, it the to me, yes. She but brought did she it see to you me. when you gave them to each and every one of them? Uh, I, I cannot remember if she was present, but... You know what my problem is? I've got two officers of the court, or five, six, seven, twenty. They're giving this court two different versions. And we want to <coughs> dignify it by saying, we never got this. It means Baloy is lying. If Baloy tells this court that he gave you all this affidavit and you say he never did, it means he is lying. It must be so. What's your problem, sir? My Lord, if I, if I might clarify, uh, without throwing Mr. Baloy and Advocate Lunisi <laughs> under the bus, I, I personally might not received the one affidavit, not the second affidavit, Where? as Mr. Baloy says, last year. Last year? Already. Yes. So he favors you. He just gives you alone. And I, he I, doesn't I, give that's the why I say I'm not sure about and then my other I colleagues. see you're standing up to yes. you. Yes, I did receive the Last one. year? Yes, I did. I did. Let's continue this time. Mr. Miss, if you want, if you want time to read these two affidavits, tell this court how many months or years you need so that we postpone, especially for you. Because you say you never received them until Thursday. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Ramosipi, you said you received them last year. Only one, my daughter. Fine. Yes. Mr. Ngumalo, now you received it last year. I did receive it last year. You wouldn't know, Mr. Mnyeke. Is no, that so? I, I don't know. But so, you want us to postpone for you, sir? I'm, I'm not suggesting any postponement. No, no. You say you haven't had time, in other words, to prepare. No, those are not my words, my daughter. I am saying that on account of the fact that these documents were already deposed to last year in but October. But he has explained, Mr. Yes. Uti, he gave them to you last year. He has explained. What more must he say? But I am telling the court as well, Mandot, in yeah. as much as Mr. Valerie So you never received them last year? No, I never received Fine. them. Fine. How, 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 how long? Them, how, much time, how, much them, how much time do you need? How much time do you need to read them and prepare? How much time? My Lord, I'm going to come up with a panacea, which is a universal solution. I don't want to waste this court's time. This witness may proceed to testify, and if there are issues that I think I need to take up with them as they would be affecting Mr. Nube, then I will approach the court with the amount of time that I'm, 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 I may need to go and consult. Didn't you guys have a pre-trial conference? No. Mr. Well, uh, the, there was a, a pre-trial conference in Palm Ridge, my lord, oh. where the, mini, the, the matter initially appeared, but none of this uh, defense counsel were Wait, present we were then. Present. Yeah, the, the, there was a different set of um, legal representatives mm. at the time. The call would recall that they only um, yeah. came into the picture mm. after the matter started in over. Okay, fine. All right, so... Mr. Minister, you say this witness can proceed. If there's any issue you want to canvas, you do so. Most definitely. Okay, fine. Okay, let's go on. And even you, Mr. Ramsepi, and Mr. Mgomezo. So this witness continue giving evidence? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct, my daughter. Thank you. Hey, my daughter. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Matlow, where do you work? I've been employed by the Road Traffic Management Corporation. Usebenza api utu usebenza la Road Traffic Management Corporation. In what capacity are you employed today? I'm an investigator and I also hold a rank of superintendent in the National Traffic Anti-Corruption Unit, commonly known as NTACO. 
manje ke wena umsebenzi wakho wenzani ukuthi uyaphenya futhi yena ungu superintendent ningizimi Africa yom. Mm. Can you set out your qualifications? My Lord, I hold a metric certificate. <coughs> Bachelor of Administration degree. Utuno matekutlecheni une bachelor ya administration. Computer literacy certificate. Na certificate so kwa solo no computer. Certificate in Forensic and Investigative Auditing. Certificate is Penya. An Advanced Certificate for fraud in Fraud Examination. And a Certificate is in Apezulu, Sogu Penya, Wamakala, Wogu, Wamakala, Wabandu Abafi Pilizayo. I also hold Traffic Officer Diploma. And a Diploma Yama Traffic, Wamapoisa, Wama Traffic Cop. My Lord, I'm also certified as fraud examiner by the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Futiena ungu muntu oiguti unigiwe ikunya noma amanda wanguti angase gube umuntu o pegayo abandu abayenza amakala kakulu amakala we fraud. I'm also a committee member of the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners in Houghton Region. Uyi committee footi yabantu ababegayo amatala lawa we fraud ekhaude. That is the summary of my qualification, my lord. Kama fupi bona ubutwe peshbali. Are you also regarded as a peace officer? Yes, my lord. Can you just elaborate on that? I'm, uh, uh, I'm appointed as a peace officer in terms of Section 334 of the Criminal Procedure Act, Act Number 51 of 1977. I'm also, my Lord, appointed as a traffic officer in terms of Section 3A of the National Road Traffic Act. Futiena. Uye poisa lomkwa ko logo ogbizwa ama traffic police. Act number 93 of 1996. Ugu yango mteto sisege lo owa kwa 1996. And can you put your experience on record? My lord, I was first employed by the Department of Roads and Transport in Limpopo province in February 2008, I was appointed as admin officer assistant. I was attached to Natis Provincial Help Desk. Can you just explain what does the acronym, acronym NATIS stand for? NATIS is a National Traffic Information System, my lord. What is NATIS Lena, the National Traffic Information System? It's a computerized register which supports the National Road Traffic Act. The register is able to get the EIA to get the EIA to the EIA to get Africa But we will re revert to the notice uh, just just now. Um, you can continue with the experience. Okay, my lord. Uh, I work. My, my duties at the Natives Provincial Help Desk were to assist all the driving license testing center in Limpopo Province. Yena umsebenzwa ke kwagade kuksiza ama. Department won't allow us to get driving license in Limbo. My Lord, I was also introducing legally imported motor vehicles and build up motor vehicle on Natis. Naya Futuaga de Esiza, we motor Ebes got the Zingana Ems and Africa Zongana. Gabusem Tetweni. My Lord, I worked for one year and nine months 
and after I resigned and joined Lepeleng Kumpi Municipality. Uye wa sebenza unyaga ne ne nyanga ezi shaka lolunye maikweta waye ga gela po umsebenzi wayo sebenza elipele ngumbi municipality I was employed by lepele ngumbi municipality on November 2009 Kona la po gulo maspana we lepele ngumbi uye wa sebenza kusugela ngo 2009 Malot, I was attached to lewa homu driving license testing center Yenage bambe gage a driving license testing station ya selebuwa homu. One of among my duties, my lord, was to assist members of the public with the application for learner's license and driving license. Omunye wa msibe nzuwa kebe guk siza abandu abazayo na payana mboguti bazibagwa zufaga ike lo za ma driver's license na ma learner's license. I was also assisting members of the public, my lord, particularly those that, those that are within the jurisdiction of the municipality with the registration and licensing of motor vehicle. My lord, I worked for one year and nine months for the municipality and I resigned. My Lord, in August 2011, I was employed by Tasima Pty Ltd. In August 2011, My Lord, the company was contracted with the National Department of Transport to provide notice to all uh, the provinces on behalf of the department. In company leo yona ya igate isebenza wuguti itumele no ma inigezele imisebenzi leye natis guma department wonke iningizim Africa yon. My lord, my position was natis critical transaction center officer. Yena umisebenzi wake kwa gate gui natis critical transaction center officer. Transaction center officer. My Lord, I was attached to Information Security Service Department. One of among my, my, my duties, my Lord, was to perform critical notice transaction on behalf of the National Department of Transport. My Lord, I was also expected to subscribe to the Association of Certified Fraud Examiner by attending seminars and conferences. My Lord, I was also expected to identify new trends and patterns of fraudulent activities on natives. Fotige iye na waega te wa mele apege no guti ike be muzien zani kuyo inoti inetis izinto ezincha ezenzwa. My Lord, I worked for three years and nine months for, for the company. Sebenze le leon kampani minyage mitatu neinyanga ezi shaka lulu. I was then employed by the Road Traffic Management Corporation. Nyemba wana wako iye na waka shwa hiro Traffic Management Corporation in May 2015. May 2015. My Lord, my current position is, is as investigator. One of among my other duties is to conduct anti-corruption operation nationally. To prepare necessary investigative reports and documentation, my lord, for court cases. My lord, I'm also investigating fraud and corruption. My lord, I also appear and testify in official proceedings. 
naye uyaye afike azophana ngobufakazi kuyindawo ezicishe zifana nazo inkantolo my lord all in all i have 16 years of experience working on the national traffic information system ekuchaza ukuthi yena useka neminyaka eyishumi nesithupha elibele sebenza that is the summary of my background ngamafupi ikona ekuthi yena angasazi sabo ngaye thank you mr matlo can you just explain how does the national traffic information system or NATIS for short work? My Lord, the National Traffic Information System is a computerized register which supports the National Road Traffic Act. Ake utazi selege uguti le NATIS ebe gato kuma nga uguti yoni sebenza ganjani uti ii ndo eguti yona ihambi selana na umsebenzi lo wa mapweisa awo mkwa. Each and every user, my Lord, who have got access to the system must undergo a training. The must also sign the Natis user undertaker, my Lord. In that undertaker, my Lord, is that you are not allowed to share your password with anyone. And that the information contained in the, the register is strictly for official purpose. And that if you are suspect that you are, you are password or your NATIS user number is being compromised, you need to immediately alert the security office, that is security officer. Futige uma ingabe wena uya kabangela noma ubona ingati i password yako aesasete njiswa wena wedwa wamele ubazi se laba abasebenza ngayo in NATIS. And that you'll be held liable for all the transactions that happened under your user number and the password. Noguti futi wena Muntu lo oniwe leo password. Uma gune mibuzo eza yo gale password yako wena wena uwa melupendu. My Lord, before you get your granted access, there must also be a letter from the institution which confirms that you are employed as such. Nga pamgo guti wena unga niwa yo na leo password noma unga wazu kisebenza lapo kwa mele utole uba nige ingwati ebo nisa guti wena nyembela utashwe ganja. No one else has got access to NATIS except the authorized users. Aksi wongu mundu onayo, onalo ipunya lo utangasebe nisa in NATIS nga panze kwa labo e gutiba nigwe lelo ku. If you say before you're granted access, there must be a letter from the association. Which association are you referring to? My lord, they are agents of the Department of Transport. Uma ukuluma nga ngoguti like my example of my lord the post office is also heavy the system so the post office will write a letter to the department that we hereby apply for the access for this individual or official as you'll be working and assisting members of the public with the renewal of a <coughs> motor vehicle license disc. Besege yena uya show uguti i post office yona njengwa ba iguti iya sebenza nga ayo le natis nguguti isize abandu ngugu umabeo lunyesa ama ingwa zaabo zama pepa we moto na abo kwa mele babe na ayo leo ingwa dile akuma nga ayo. My Lord, even members of the South African Police Service, they have to undergo the same process and procedure in order to obtain access. And
have you been granted access to the NATIS system? Yes, my lord, I have direct access to the system. When I go to Nigiwe, I go to Nigiwe, I go to Nigiwe, I go to Nigiwe, I go Thank you. Um, now, having set out that background, can I then ask you to turn to page one of the, your affidavit that consists of 22 pages? Paragraph three. I see again, go page one. And, and maybe just before that, what type of information is stored on the NATIS system? My Lord, the information that is stored on NATIS is the personal particulars. Bule nati system yee ni indo ego ti ya fawa la po uti imini ni wane yo muntu. Such as a sign name and initials. Fana nesbo ngo na ma initials. ID number. ID number yo muntu. Email address. Email address yake. Agenda. Nogutu muntu espaza nomo westlisa. Yo residential address. Nekeli la lao sala kona. Postal address. Ne address ya kwa ya kupo yu uma is in those postal waguwe. And the locality of the jurisdiction where you perform your way, you license your motor vehicles. No guti i license ya kwa ye moto we na uya ye uye seven se kupi noma uye nze kupi uma uyo ilungis. Malot, there is also, it also contain the vehicle information. Futi ya paano no guti i moto le o uye seven se sayo itini. It also contains the, uh, the register of all the driving license testing centers. Gupa alwe futi na ma register wa ma driving license center wa onke. It also contains the name of officials that are authorized to access the system. Bese yo na le natis iya asho no guti abubani abandu abane kunya ilo guti bangasibenzisa leo system. My Lord, it also contains the infringement notices that were issued by the traffic officers on the road. Because young and don't know if all of you know what he umun to uye waniwa amatigit amanga ki emka kwe. And just explain what is an infringement notice. My Lord, the infringement notice is commonly known as traffic fine. Then what the layer could manga ayo aisho petelezi ati infringement notice. You wanna amatigit is what all ayo emka kwe. You've mentioned all these details. What about the contact numbers? My Lord, the contact numbers of the, the applicant will also be uh, inputted on the, on the register. Manje ukulumile nga lolo nge lolo luasi. Ama nombonu womundu wona ayavela na utiebo na ayavela. Now, what happens, for instance, if a transaction is performed at the driver's license testing center at any given time? My Lord, the system... At any given place? My Lord, the system has been programmed to leave the audit trail for any transaction that is being performed. Manjo, when Zagala anige uma uba nento ANZ wayo u leo system noma gwe yipinda wo uti leo system iso bonisa Uguti gagate gwenzi wani yenzi wa ubali egu upi. Okay. We can proceed to paragraph three of your first affidavit. Ngaya yegu paragraph three. You can read it out, my lord. Yes. My lord, I was on duty on Thursday, 18th of November, 2020, when I received a request letter dated 2020-11-18, through the email from the Office of the National Commissioner. I was requested to assist with regards to investigation on suspect motor vehicle status, including infringement notices, as per Fosloras case 636 forward slash 10 forward slash 2014. <laughs> 18th November 2020, Uguti Ienze ke uye watelwange email uguti Ienze upenyo nge moto etize ebegate gusolwa leo moto leo ibegate i hamba gule kala ele 636 
10, 2014. My Lord, I was also requested to document my findings in terms of Section 212 of the Criminal Procedure Act, Act Number 77, Act Number 51 of 1977. As a direct result thereof, by virtue of my capacity as an investigator with the direct access to National Traffic Information System, which is NATIS, I, I hereby declare the following findings under Mr. Fiso Kutle Mutuli. The ID number is 86011561286. Based on the request of Colonel, Colonel Kilinda, as per Force Loras case 636 forward slash 10 forward slash 2014. We to Azos Tola, Gayo Leo Moto Leo, Eguti, Uye Wakubega Wa Penya. Manje ge yena utole ulwa zingo fiso gutle ntuli oiguti uya bala na yo i ID number yake leso stelo saskate esi tole gusuga u colonel kininda ingetala i six three six ten yaga twenty fourteen. Now where where did you obtain that name as well as the ID number from? My my lord, the name will also contain in the letter. That was submitted or uh, which was a part of the request forwarded to me. Igama Leli ne ID number Uz Tole Pi Uting is Tole Ule Anwat Lebenga Tengi Pelwa Uguting Penye Gale Lika Romangale Omo. If I can then ask you to just turn to the second affidavit. Page yeah, nine yeah. thereof. We affidavit yes be no page nine. <clears throat> Paragraph 5. Paragraph 5, my lord. Natis records indicate that ID number. Please just read the, 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 the whole thing. Five point, start at 5.1. 5.1. Yes. Okay. Uh, 5. five it, it's a fee ID number 86011056120861. Yeah. Yes. Okay. My Lord, uh, Natis records indicate that this ID number belongs to F. Ntuli, he ran after referred to as an accused, and his cell phone number is 073-305-9202, and his address is 87 Dewey Street, Wedville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. Manje Afidavit Kuche ntuli yena ID number yake ya vela lapo futi na manomono wake wote ngo aya vela lapo ikeli lake ufiso kuche ntuli kutuwa waega tesala e number 87 Dube Street e Watville e Pinoni postal code ya kona 1516 And where did you obtain these particulars? My lord, these particulars I obtained them from the computerized register which is NATIS Manje, Lulu as when I will tatapi, Lagu Vela in Nombolo, Yotingo, Nekeli, Utingis Tate, Ule system AC Biza in Natis. Are you able to go into the system now to, to show those particulars? Uh, my Lord, if I'm be given a moment, let me try to log in to the system. Ungawa Zugunge, and I get the system Osborne is a lender, and we show you Uting Ella is Kashanyana, who is a Wazugunge and our system. Lord, it's <coughs> 21 past 11. Will this be an appropriate no, time no, to take the shot? No, we have enough time in the morning. Thank you.
uh, what I'm doing here, my lot, is that I'm going to input the ID number of the accused. Okay. In terms of yens and Lanam Gossian Ganton, which is of Faga, E. Nomboyos, as he saw Yak Umsolo. Just recite it so that everybody can hear it. Otherwise, we'll have problems to say you put in an ID, we don't even know who it was. So, if you can also put on record the name of the okay, person. Okay, the name of the accused is Fiso Kuten Tuli. The ID number is 86011-0561286. Manje uti uzo faga ye ID number ya ke ufiso guten tuli ID number 86011-0512086. Malot, the system, the way it has been programmed that there is a menu for each and every transaction that you want to conduct on the on the system. The system ile na angale nge li sebenza nga kona, kune... Zindlela Ebuti EIA is Landelele, Uyo Yonke into Ofunwe Sebenza, Uyo. So if you want to check the person's particulars, you merely go to Natis Transaction 551, as it shows, as indicated on the, the top left. Bese Uma Ingabe Ofuna Uwas, Uyo Yonke into Ofunwe Sebenza, Uyo Natis 551. Then it says person's queen. My lord, if I query this person, there will also be an audit trail on the system that I did the query uh, on the 20 seconds around 24 past 11. <laughs> Hmm. So now I'm just going to press enter so that I can able to access these personal particulars. These are his personal particulars and the personal address. The address yeah, okay. can you just put them on record? Uh, my lord, if I can, if I may start from the from the top left, it says the identification type. Uh, this simply means that when he was transacting on the system, he produced the, the Republic of South African ID. The ID number will also be on record as 86011056012086. If you check on the next row, they say, uh, on the far left is the same person's particulars. The nationality of this person is the South African. Gender is male. Same name is Ntuli. Initials is F. The full names were not were supposed to be have been typed, but here it was not typed. My lord, from time to time when you apply uh, for services at the Department of Transport, there is a form that is issued to you. So from time to time the, you will see that a, a blog which says official language of preference. So here his official language of preference is English. Sorry, sorry, for my, for my appreciation. This information is, is supplied by the person himself. Yes. If he says Corsa, then it will be captured as, as such. And if he says Zulu, it will be captured as such, my lord. Shangan, 
it will be captured as such, my lord. English, it will be captured as such, my lord. Right. And how is this information furnished? Online, in person, or what is the position? My Lord, let me just give you an example that you want to apply for a learner's license. When you, when you approach the, uh, the appropriate graded driving license testing center, immediately when you, uh, uh, when you arrive, they ask you to produce your acceptable identification. Once you produce your acceptable identification, you will then be issued with a form marked LL1. In that form, part A, they want you to fill in your personal particulars. Lo mundu lo ima ya figa e department ya mapoisa ya ma traffic ya na ake uya niwa i form a ye na albiza u ll1 ili ni form a utilia kwa liiswa gemba kukutu mundu sega ba nigi ili umazi iswa ki well, Lord, on that part a your personal particular you are expected to complete your id number your full names your postal address your physical address as well as your contact number. Kona la pogule no formu ye uya tailwa ugutu ufage ika manako, sbongo sako, ID number yako, ne keli la la usla la kona, ne keli elizo sechenzi iswa uma ingabe uzo tingu ugutu upose elwe izi ito. As well as the language of preference. No limi ewe na ufisa ugutu li sechenzi iswe. Continue to place the okay. information. Thank you, my lord. My lord, I'm, I'm continuing on the screen. Uh, the registering authority where he was transacting or where he was making an application, yet is identified as Benoni. And the locality of the record is also Benoni. My lord, in this case, it simply means that if you need to retrieve a file of this accused, you need to approach the Binoni registering authority. And can you just maybe clarify what was this application for? My lord, My lord, the accused has already been holding a, a driving license, a C1 driving license. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, if I'm, I'm continuing with the screen, the date of change of address, this simply means that the address was changed in 2011-0905. Uh, at the status of the person it shows that he's still active. <coughs> My Lord, his date of birth is also there as 1986-0110. Uh, cell phone number is 073-305-9202. The local authority is still be known. That is the system also asking that this person is allowed to move or merge or restricted, but here it says it's allowed to move or merge. 
The person's status date here, my lord, is 2110905. The verification of address particulars here shows that you know. While we are still on the screen, my lord, we're going to the last row. Uh, the next row, not the last row, the next row, which says, or the, the far left, it says, persons address particulars. The information that was provided by accused as postal address is 87 Dewey Street, Waitville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. The street address is the same as the postal code, postal address. Which is 87 Dewey Street, Waitville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. Uh, on the last row, my lord, it says other alias for the person entity. In this case, it's, it's not, there is nothing because the person is a, a, is a, is a South African. That, that, that is the head ballot. Thank you. Right. If I can then ask you then to return to um, affidavit page two. The, the first affidavit consisting of 22 pages, paragraph A. Okay. I see again, we have to with Yaakov, page two. Uh, my Lord, the National Traffic Information System, NETIS, records indicate that an infringement in the brackets is a handwritten notice number 01-00-11-00. Two nine four double zero three seven dash six was issued to the alleged infringer and the motor vehicle identified below. Manjege Lana Biabonisa Uti Buye Wabane Tigi di Ebelgate Nibe Lomundu Nemoto Lebegate Ehambangayo. If it says handwritten, what does that mean? If it is handwritten, my lord, it simply means that your traffic officer stopped you along the public road. Manjege Lana and Jemoba Iti Ipan Wang Santa Bukazukti Nebutua Amapoisa Wamkwako Ayawa Mesa M Kakoe. And issue you with the infringement notice which is commonly known as the traffic ticket. Bona ye by Bagnika ye itigeti nasem kakwe. Yes, may proceed. Okay. My lord, the particulars of the alleged infringer are as follows. <coughs> Side M in initia in and initials is Mtuli F. Gender is male. ID number is 8601105614. Is it number 8 the cell phone number is 073 the number is 073 where would this particulars have been derived from 
but not when you are stopped and you are supposed to be issued with the infringement notice. Uh, the traffic officer will first uh, request your driving licenses. So your driving license contains your ID number, is the, and the traffic officers go to use, make use of that ID number to trust and input it on the, the handwritten notice. But when it comes to the address, the traffic officer, as well as the contact number, the traffic officer will ask you, what is your address? Then you provide the address. The reason of asking the traffic officer to ask you the address is because they also want to remind you with this notice that you need to pay it. Manjege lolwazi u baza be baltola fi amapoisa uti amapoisa uma bekmisa mka kweni bazo kutela ila esensi yako la iguti uyabaniga bese ila esensi yona ine kama ine inama initials wako ine spongo futi ibe ne nombo lo yako yolwazi so bona age bese batela ukeli lo wako isi zaatu so kuti batela ukeli lako uguti baza babu wazi kukubuza and the cell number? They also asking you your cell number. So who finishes the cell number? In this case, my lot is an accused. Yes, you may continue. Uh, the particulars of the motor vehicles. Uh, that are linked to the infringement notice are shown uh, are shown below. My lord, the license number is BP, which is Bravo Papa 88 Romeo Hotel GP. BP eight eight R H G P. The engine number is Quebec yes. Golf. It's one. It, it's fine. Um, we will we, we'll come to that should it become necessary. Um, you have certain annexures attached to your second affidavit. Is there a relevant annexure for this infringement notice? Uh, in this case, my lord. If I can ask you to turn to MCC3. MCC3. Yes, my lord. On Anexa MCC03 is the infringement notice that was issued at the time. Thank you. If I can ask you then to turn to page three of your affidavit, paragraph B. The first affidavit or the second affidavit? The, the, the first affidavit. I'm sorry. I see again page three, the affidavit. I'm there, my lord. Yes. I'll just put that on record. Okay. My lord, the notice records reveal that the above mentioned alleged infringer, while operating the above identified motor vehicle on a public road situated in the city of Johannesburg, or the street A identified as Cleveland, or date and time is 14 July 2013, at, 12, at 10 to 1 in the afternoon. Uh, I've noted a, a, a typing error there. I said she, instead of he, uh, okay. was stopped and issued with infringement, which is a handwritten notice, number 01-0011-0029-40037-6, by traffic officer identifies as B. Matsila. The officer infrastructure number is 495128C4 and the traffic officer was attached to JMPD issuing authority on the date in question. My Lord, I'm seated here and wondering if uh, I'm actually able to follow the testimony of this witness here. Maybe 
because the state is always uh, ready to read the provisions from the Criminal Procedure Act. I would request the state to read the provisions of Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Act. Maybe that will give this court, my colleagues and myself, a bit of a clue I'm following as to the, the nature of this. I'm following the evidence. Everything. Even when he briefs, I'm following. As it please the court, my lord, then let me sp go specific to my reason why I'm standing here. They say they don't understand what your witness is saying. In other words. I'm, I'm saying, my lord, let me go briefly to the reason why I'm standing up. <coughs> this trial is about the scene or the incident that took place at Fossil Ridge, the date on which is the 26th of October 2014. This is what this trial is see, I mean, this court is seized. Mr. Mr. I cannot. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes, my lord. You can't tell the state how to lead its evidence. If it starts 1652, when John van Rivier came here, yes. we don't know where he's going to. That is the because reason. Let me tell you, you know, this trial is so, is so prolonged because people don't want to admit even the obvious. Just wait. I mean, like, uh, that's what I was asking you. Didn't you guys have a pre trial? Like, for instance, if you understand that there is an electronic system called NATIS, and this is how it functions. Once the state tells you we've got your client's particulars here, which were printed through the electronic system of NATIS, yes. you admit this thing, all of you. Now you must read all this, which is so obvious to me again, anyway. Let me try to assist on that, my lord. Mm. Probably it would have been very prudent for the state Immediately, the court asked that to request an adjournment, approached us, find out whether we cannot meet each other halfway to reduce what is happening here. Because precisely that's my point. My point is all that is happening here is now irrelevant in respect of the charges that these accused persons are facing. Uh, uh, Mr. And that is encapsulated Sorry. in terms of Section 210 of the Criminal Mr. Procedure Mr. Act. Mr. Maybe it would be an opportunity, time, my lord to adjourn, Mr. discuss the matter, and find out whether can't we really meet each other halfway in order to reduce what is happening here. Mr. Sibanda and Mr. Baloui, they say all that you are leading here is irrelevant. <laughs> well, irrelevant. My, Section it, 20, 210 says, irrelevant evidence should yes. not be led, neither evidence which yes. won't contribute to the solution or the proof or the yes. verification of the accident which is adduced. Uh, that is why, <laughs> my lord, at the beginning I tried to address the court yeah. so to show the relevance of the evidence okay. and, and they then objected. Now they say they don't understand the relevance of the evidence. Yeah. If only uh, they let's, gave let's me continue, the Mr. as a court person. Anyway, listen to me. Is it irrelevant, like Mr. No, no. Nisi is saying it's irrelevant? No, no, it's, it's, it's relevant, my lord. I've indicated that, that okay. the cell numbers will tie up with the evidence of Lieutenant Colonel State. As it please the court, my lord. I find it very irrelevant to the evidence. No, no, Mr. Ndisi, you're um, wrong, you're wrong, please, please. I'm, you can't can make a statement that this evidence is irrelevant. When the person who adduces that evidence says it is relevant, you, the onus is on you thereafter to show that it was irrelevant by cross-examination. No problem. Me, by cross-examination. <coughs> You can show that this is irrelevant. But I can't stop Mr. Baloi and Sibande leading this evidence when they tell me that it is relevant. It is in proof of what their case the, or the charge sheet is about. May I, may I my lord, hmm? request an indulgence just to finish what I've started? <coughs> I'm saying it is relevant in the following sense. These charges that all these persons are, uh, that these accused are facing here, They've got nothing to do with traffic uh, offenses. I don't know. I don't know. It is there in the indictment, my lord. I don't and, know. In, and also in the summary of no, the substantial no. facts. No, no. I, I'm overruling that. I'm overruling that. As it is the the state says it's relevant. Yes. He, said he was enunciating why he is saying this evidence should be led is to link this and this and that and that and that. And then Mr. Ramasipiri stood up and said, hey, this guy is reading evidence now. He's now testifying. And Mr. 
But Louis says he was trying to do that ex ex <laughs> that uh, exercise yes, in ma order to show how this witness's evidence links to the charge, whatever charge. Is that what you are saying? Indeed, my lord. And I can't stop him. Thank you, my lord. I will respect the court's order. I can't stop him. Thank and you, my lord. This is not at all about the infringement notices. It's about the information yes. that was given by the person who was stopped by a traffic officer. That's a simple fact of the matter. Well, amongst other things, and I mustn't be accused of giving evidence. Yes. When you were resuscitating and enunciating, enunciating how you intend linking, you pertinently mentioned that the defense of accused number one is that he was not in Gauti. Yes, he, 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 he did. And then, etc., etc., etc. You are going to show that he was in Gauti. When he says from 215, etc., etc., he was in Gauti, he was way, 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 way. Can you, can you proceed? Okay. Hey. Indeed, my lord. Um, you can continue, sir. Uh, uh, I understand that the court, my lord, is referring to the fact that Mr. Vanoi, when he indicated at the beginning, um, it was about accused number one. But as this witness is testifying, he's referring to accused number five, Mr. Ntuli. Accused number one is Mr. C. No, no, no. He actually said his, the evidence of this witness is yes. in relation to all the accused. Did you say that, sir? <laughs> Indeed, my lord. Hey, man, let's, uh, let's Thank not you, waste time. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Uh, Aye, next. <coughs> um, can you turn to page five of exhibit, um, the, the first statement, page five, paragraph H. Okay. I'll see you here for page five, paragraph H. Page five. <coughs> This page 5, paragraph 8 okay. of the first affidavit. Uh, my Lord, Netis records indicate that Mr. Fiso Kutlen Tuli, ID number 86011056121086, was issued with infringement, uh, which is the handwritten notice number 01 00 11 01 0 01 by a traffic officer. Identified as MJ Stofield. Yes, attached to? The officers attached to JMPD issuing authority. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, the particulars of the infringement are shown below. Uh, it indicates that uh, on, uh, sign name is Ntuli, uh, initials is F, the ID number is 86011056121086, and the, la the license code that he holds is C1, and his contact number is zero seven three three zero five nine two zero two. The address? The address is eight seven two street Waiteville Bidon. The postal code is one five one six. Lelo Tigi Tigi the Casa Imininwa Nayake U F Ntuli a Guti Lia Shonogu Lipale name Nama number watch or thing or ne number yake o Zaziso Besege Gua Balwa ne Kelly Lake. And the motor vehicle particulars? And the, and the motor vehicle particulars, uh, it, it, here it shows that it was attached, affixed with the temporary permit number EKG615GP. And the description of, of the vehicle is Volkswagen hatchback. The service number is not captured here, but the color of the vehicle is white. Yes, and the date of the infringement? The date of infringement, my lord, is the 2nd of February 2016. February 20. 
2016. Yes, if I can ask you then to turn to page six. I see I gave page six. Paragraph K. Paragraph K. My Lord, National Traffic Information System latest records further indicate that an infringement notice number 01-0011-0168-163-848 was issued to Mr. Fisobutri Kutuli, ID number 86011056-12086 by traffic officer identified as M.A. Mudisani. The officer is also attached to JP <coughs> issuing authority. <coughs> Bonisalana Ubuti Futi Undulu Yawanuga Tigeti Ebegate Eniwa U M A Mudisana Naya Usebenza UJ M P D. Page seven, if you can just turn to page seven. Just put only the name of the uh, driver, the address, cell phone number and the particulars of the vehicle and the date of the <coughs> infringement. Okay. Well, the, the surname of the infringer is Kutuli and initials is F. The ID number is 86011056120086. The license code is C1. The address is 87 Juve Street, Waiteville, Benoni. The postal code is 1516. The uh, his <coughs> phone number is 073-305-9202. The motor vehicle particulars in question is the license number here is CT79YZGP. It's a, also a hatchback. Uh, here it's a, it's a, it's a tear of, of the vehicle, it's 1570, and it's a Volkswagen a series is VW250 Polo. The color here is gray. Lana ye we have funda ibininguana ya ke u F to li base ye u funda ni bininguana ye moto wutwa imoto gakate we VW ebegate i grey yona i number plate ya corner ebegate it is C T seven nine Y Z G P Yona Leo Moto Wakate we VW e grey. You mentioned in paragraph H that this was also a handwritten notice, in other words, where a person was stopped by a traffic officer. <coughs> and, and the information regarding the cell phone number and address, who would have, where would that information have it's come it's from? It's furnished by, my lot by the motorist. Manje imini wana ufana no nombo do yo tui wona ikeli lona litatwa pi gutwa umuntu o shayela leo moto uyena ozo nika ama kwesa leo mini nita. Are you able to go into the system just to check the color of the, this particular vehicle? Mga wazo vya usisimu kuskele kumuchiku mbala wa leo moto wa wakati kunjani? Yes, my lord, I'm looking in
uh, my lord, like I've already explained that on NetEase, immediately when you logged in, there's a menu for each and everything transaction that you want to perform. But simply because uh, I was requested to check the color of the vehicle, uh, then I'll go to the first menu, which is a uh, motor vehicles. Then I'll simply press one and press enter. Then if you can check from 12, 14, 15, 16, on the 16 it says queries. Then I'll go to a 164. 164, which or if you can check on the top top left, it says 164 motor vehicle, all owners query. Then I'm going to input the license number, which is CT79YZGP. CT seven nine YZ GP. My lord, if you can check the from the bottom, it says last number, it says no record that match the search criteria were found. And the So okay. license number. So then I'm going to check it on the previous as a previous license number under option five. CT seven nine YZ GP. My lord. Because I've, the menu that I've, I've selected it says motor vehicle all owners queries. It, it will first show you all the the owners from the bottom to the top. But because our is, our interest is on color, I'm simply going to press enter to check the color of this vehicle. And also perhaps just the particulars of the make of, of the vehicle. Okay. My Lord, I've opened the, the, the page uh, for the purpose of record. The current license number of this vehicle is GPP660EC. Current is current one is J J not J. Is it J or G? C J J J for Juliet. J J J okay fine. J P P six six zero C. Yes. The, the, the chassis number is AAV. No, no, it's fine. Just, just the make of the vehicle. Okay. My lord, the make of the vehicle the is, is Volkswagen. The series is VW250 Polo. The color is silver. Thank you. If I can then ask you to <coughs> turn back to your affidavit on page seven. As we are page seven, paragraph L. Uh, my lord, Natis records reveal that the motor vehicle with the description as hatchback make Volkswagen series VW250 Polo with license number CT79YZGP silver in color. The lawful title holder on the date in question 
was BMW Finance Services. The Natis business registration number of is 9004670070228. And the lawful owner was Banako Oma Fleet and Shuttle. Natis business registration certificate number is Z0912429200138. The full particulars of the previous owner and the current owner of the license number CT79YZGP, which is currently changed to JPP660EC, are shown on page 8 of, okay. of 22. Mandege, Lana Gabonisage, Uti, Immortal Lena, EVW, Ipolo Levu, Kunyangayo, in number plate, Yakonabu CT79. VY le a silver gombala, umnigas wayo ngalesus kati wakate kuyi BMW finance service, laba abasizayo umaumuntu efaga istredo se mali, besege biabonagala futi no guti abanigazi njemo baya igati iswe wa BMW abanigaz bayo wakate gu bana oma fleet and shuttle e guti bau shishi ni nabo besege Ubonagala no guti abanigazi ababu abakala bagate bayo leo number plate U C T seven nine V Y Z Z Y Z G P Wakate Le S Ishinji we manje Ishinje J P P six zero six six zero E C Wea Bonagala Uguti Gu Kona Ufagazi Umaku Kubewa Wewa page A. Now, Mr. Matlow, the fact that the lawful owner at the time was Banakoma Fleet and Shuttle, is that indicative of anything? But in this case, it appears as if it was a rental company. Manjinje, Waba Iguti, E.T. Abanigas Wakate, Gu Banakoma Fleet and Shuttle. According to Oma, you show Uti Kubonagale, Nati Wakate, Mwabandu, Abakashi, Saki, Thank you. That's all as far as the first affidavit is concerned. <coughs> if I can ask you then to turn to the second affidavit. Page 2, paragraph 3.1. <coughs> Page 2. <coughs> My Lord, I was on duty on Thursday, 14th of September 2023, and I received a request letter in the bracket. It's SAP 21, close bracket from Brigadier P.M. Gilinda, an investigating officer attached to SAPS National Cold Case Unit, as per Force Case 636, forward slash 10, forward slash 2023. <coughs> no, I've just noted that I, I, I made a mistake here, 2023, it was supposed to be 2024, 2014. <laughs> Uti a funa uluazi ebegate eli thona lelo lelo leo email noma leso stelo siku ya ku brigadir bi n kininda e uti upenya ikala leli eli ku six three six ten twenty fourteen koto alana uba uti wenze ikota upale twenty thirteen. Paragraph three point two. My Lord, I was requested to assist in establishing the following. Whether any of the below mentioned person ever applied for any license or driving license between the period of 2013 December to 20 to December 2014. Who is Katis to Sugela 2013 December? We are 2014 December. Whether such documents were issued or not, and on what dates? We go to Labo Band to buy Bandi Wana Ama license, Norma Ama Lenas, Futi Bandi Wanga Yipi date. Indicate the process of doing such application. Futi Usho no Guti Bonabala de Lele. Must the applicant be physically present at the testing station to do such or not? Any other activity you can pick up around the above period, insofar as the details is provided. 
Any renewal of vehicle license by any of the below listed persons in and around Boxbed area in particular. However, any other information will assist. Any documents like ID or any form of identification provided by any of the persons mentioned during the transaction, including the address and the contact details. Uh, the letter also provided me with the name of the accused. The, uh, the, the names are as follows. And the ID number. Muzika Kulelwa Stemba Svea. Muzika Kulelwa Stemba Svea. ID number is 86-01215933. Na yo yei ID number njemoba iPhone. Fizokutle Ntuli. ID number is 86-011056-12086. Fizokutle Ntuli ne ID number ya kyo ya iPhone lako. The other one is Mtoko CZ. Zipoko zipo zonke mapisa. No mtogo zisi zipo zonke mapisa. The ID number for the purpose of record is 8510046202081. Na yo again the ID number ya ke umtogo zisi zipo zonke mapisa. Bongane Sandiso Ntanzi. Bongane Sandiso Ntanzi. ID number is 9012026197083. Toby C. Prince Mube. No, Toby C. Prince Mube. ID number is 85040360580. May I proceed, my Yes, yes, paragraph 4. My Lord, my Lord, in compliance with the request, I directly access notice and search for the requested information. And I'm satisfied that the requested information that I found on notice affects and transaction that had been registered or recorded on notice in terms of section 77 of the National Road Traffic Act for the purpose of the said act. Then I further check the Muzika Kulelo Stemba Sevea with ID number 8601215933083. Netis records, my lord, indicate that an ID number 86012159 belongs to MS Sevilla, referred to as an accused, and his cell phone number is 082062705, and his street address is Su2 Hostel, mm -hmm. N43, Foslo Ras, postal code is 1459. Are you able to go into the system to show these particulars? I was if you can check on the screen. 
as I've indicated, that there's menu for each and every transaction that you do on Netis. Yeah, because you want to check the personal particulars of the accused, they will simply go to number five. Which is 551, five, as shown on the far left as person's query. I'm not going to input the ID number of the accused on the on the uh, space provided. We are the ID number yeah, eight six zero one two one five nine three three zero eight three. Then press enter, then the information will appear. Yes, can you just put uh, the name, the cell number, and the street address? My lord, the side name is Sevilla, and the initials is MS. The full names are not captured here, but only the initials. The date of birth is 1986-0121. The cell phone number provided is 082-066-2705. The postal address is Sutu Hostel, N434 Slorras. The postal code is one four one five nine. The postal code is one four five nine. Thank you. You can then um, revert to your affidavit. Page four. You are on paragraph four point one point three. Mabuyana yego affidavit ya kuhu paragraph four point one three. My lord, on the seventeenth of July, twenty fourteen. At 12.33 23 seconds, Netis records as shown on page 1 of Annexure MCC01. We are going to go to July. 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 Indicate that a Netis transaction 706, which in the bracket is a record pre booking was performed on the accused ID number 86012159383083. A Natis transaction 706 allow the pre-booking of driving license and learner's license. System in other words, applicants are allowed to fold the relevant call center of the driving license testing center, which is the DLTC, and a make telephonic booking. The call center or the DLTC will initiate the booking. But no payment will be made and the reserve and the reserve the reserve the, the session. But to a yiko imali is of hoka basege uya uya nigwa no malelo langalia trinwa. Yes. My lord, the recorded pre-booking of the said accused is related to Elena's license code three application as shown on page two of annex MCC zero one. Are you able to show the annexures yes. on the screen?
Uh, I'm going to input the ID number of the accused. Uh, 86015933083. And I'm going to specifically on this date, on the 17th of July. Can check my lord on the top right it says ca12 query audit information per person entity i'm going to the, the bottom one where, where it says record pre-booking and I'll press enter on it to check who was assisting the accused. Here it shows that the official that was assisting the accused is RJ Mokwatsani. It also shows the, the transaction type, which is a record pre booking. It also showed the office where the pre-booking was, was made. We are only supporting the office which in this case is Pragpan. It also showed the computer workstation which the official was using. If you go to the to the bottom row where it says the reference, it shows the booking reference number as 401-0000-D435. It, it also says first available appointment reserved indication says no. My Lord, if, if, if I go further and press it and enter on the same menu, it shows the DLTC infrastructure number where the applicant was assisted. And the lessons and the learner's lessons test type code which the applicant applied. In this case, it's code 3. And which code is that? A code 3, my lord, it allows you to drive motor vehicles that exceed 3,500 kilograms. Uh, commonly known uh, co uh, driving license code such as C1, EC, but they commonly known as code 14. And it also, also shows the, uh, here it shows the learner's license booking date. In this case, the applicant was was given in 2014 0722 at The learner's license booking date made made date is all 2014 
when you go to the bottom where it says learners lessons test teachers it says booking and confirmed in this case it simply says that the the accused was in intended to write a learner's lessons on the 22nd of july 2014. But a payment has not been made yet to confirm the, the date. If I go back, my lord, to page two of forty-two. Uh, there is another transaction that is performed on the said day. I'm going to click on it just to see what was happening here. In this case, my lord, the applicant was confirming the date which was, uh, which was provided to him when he was doing the pre-booking. Uh, and just explain pre-booking, what, what is that? Or pre what, does, what does it mean? Okay, pre-booking, you simply reserve the space to write a learner's lessons on a certain date. Lento ebizu apetele zigi pre-booking, uti wena, uso uya tela uti, apapeke edelelo tangalelo, e uti wena, ufisa uyo bala in learner's lessons in the and, and how is it done online, in person, or what is the position? Uh, you are allowed to approach the, uh, the, the, uh, the driving license testing center, or you, are, you can call. At the time, remember it was in 2014. At the time, you were allowed to walk in or call. Manje, umuntu waiga te en zanjani ubuze a fage sona le sospelo uti uga kwa kwa le sospati kwa kati u 2014. Umuntu waiga te enga vunyelwa ubuti angangena Norma and Yes. Okay. Uh, furthermore, when I press, I just wanted to check the press to press the enter to check the different of times of pre-booking and the date in which he confirmed the booking. My lord, I'm checking the difference of time here. It simply says that. The applicant went in person. Because the time in which he confirmed the booking is 12.45.33. And the pre-booking was made in 12.33.23. Of Furthermore, my lord, what I've noted is that the workstation or computer that the applicant was confirmed with the booking is not the same that the one that was used when he was doing a pre-booking. Even the official that was assisting him to confirm the, the booking is not the same that, that was assisting him to, to conduct to, to, to reserve the pre-booking. Because the one who confirmed the official that confirmed who received the money is identified as M. I. Hendrik. And the one who assisted him to reserve the date is R. G. Mukwetsani. Yes. You, you can then proceed from where you left off on okay. your affidavit. Okay. Paragraph 4.1.5. Paragraph 4.1.5. Okay, thank you. Marot, on the 17th of July 2014, at 12.45, 30 seconds, records as shown on page 3 of Annexure MCC01. 
history of NXI MCC01. Gay seventeen is got live. We are going to go live here. We got the system here about here. I am going to say let's invest in London live. History of NXI MCC. Indicate that notice transaction seven two one, which is an application for learner's license, was performed on the accused ID number eight six. Zero one two one five nine double three zero eight double three zero eight three. Ogo tige bwe gwa fawa istrelo sa yo ilenas license ule nombolo yosa zisu. Malod, a notice transaction seven two one is used to record an application for ilenas licenses. Leo lapo ye buya ye gutelwe ogo tige umuntu ufaga istrelo so ogo tige. The official that initiated and concluded this notice transaction 721 on computer workstation ID 4319-004 at Pragpan DLTC is identified as M.I. Hendricks with notice user number 4010A04Z. Umuntu uge o wigutu uye wa sebenza guleo kompyuta obega de esi za lo muntu. Ye na waiga te ese pragban u M I Hendricks. Malo, that is record further indicate that the said accused made has made a cash payment of 108 rand for learner's license application, and he was issued with receipt number 4140100045 J K 8Y, as shown on page four of annexure M C C zero one. Kutike ya bana kana ubuti umsolo uye wa. Oka imali elenga na no hundred and eight rand one iwa ne receipt. Malot, a notice transaction seven two one can only be performed if the applicant has been authorized to undertake a learner's license test, and the applicant is compelled to make an application in person, as prescribed in section seventeen and regulation one o three of National Road Traffic Act ninety three of nineteen ninety six, as shown on page five of annex. MCC zero one. Manje ge lesi spelo sienti wa umuntu odima yo yena ilena snoma ilicense leyo gokuwa ke. Malot, if I may be allowed to read out section seventeen of the National Road Traffic Act, where it says application for a for an issue of learner's license on annex MCC zero one page five. Kosi yangu dola mzala ukufunda ge lo ugutumte to utini. Yes, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay. It, uh, it reads as follows, subsection 1. Subject to the section 24, a person desiring to obtain a learner's license shall in person apply, therefore, in prescribed manner to an appropriate graded driving license testing center. Uh, subsection 2. Upon receipt of an application in terms of subsection 1, the driving license testing center concerned shall, if it is satisfied from the information furnished in the application or from such further information, as such center may reasonably request that the applicant is not disqualified from obtaining a learner's license, determine a day and a time at which the applicant shall present himself or herself to be examined and tested by the examiner for driving license in a manner and in respect of matter as prescribed. We have found that the superintendent is going to be able to do the same thing as the ILAP, and the field is going to be able to do the same thing as the ILAP, and the department is going to be able to do the same thing as the ILAP, and the department is going to be able to do the same thing as the ILAP. It's fine, you don't need to read any further. Is, is, is there um, perhaps a form that is being completed when my lord the form that is completed is marked an uh, application for learner's license which is ll1 yes. and is there a reason why the person must report or appear in person to apply for a learner's license my lord there is a reason for that because you need to make a declaration that you are not suffering from fainting due to hypertension. You also have to make a declaration as well that you don't suffer from any diseases that may render you to be incapable capable of driving or controlling a motor vehicle, which might be a risk to other motorists. 
sikhona na isizathu esiyenza ukuthi umuntu kwamele aziyele lapho ukuthi yebo sikhona isizathu kungahle kuzo kuzwa ukuthi awunaso isifo sokuwana lesi esingayenza ukuthi ube yingozi uma sewushayela noma awunaso esinye isifo esingayenza ukuthi ube yingozi kwabanye abantu abashayela imo malot you also subjected for eye test bazokuhlola futhi namele and you must also make a declaration that you are not suffering from uh, you are not suffering or addicted to the use of drugs having nicotinic effect futhi ke ukwamele nawe usho ukuthi wena awusebenzisi idakamizwa ekuthi zingahle zikunyabeze ekuthi lo uthole ilena sinoma ilicense and that you are not suffering from the excessive use of intoxicating liquor nawe ke kwamele usho ukuthi wena awuphuze amanze amponjwana and that you are not prohibited to apply for learner's license or driving license by reason of any disqualification. You must make also make a declaration that you are not suffering from uncontrolled diabetes. And uncontrolled epilepsy. No, but I own us so easy for so good. And that you are not suffering from ment- any form of mental illness. Pinde ukaze no but I own us so easy for senondo, which require you to be detained or supervised or controlled. Si for senondo esenza ugutu wena uvane wena noma ukale ukpegi. And be admitted as a patient in terms of. Mental Health Act number 18 of 1973. Then if the state if the station is satisfied that you you don't fall into that category, a date and a time for you to be right learners lessons will then be issued to you. And you also need to make a, a declaration that you realize that furnishing a false information will amount to a fine or one year imprisonment or both. Thank you. <coughs> you can proceed to page six, paragraph four point one point eight. I see again go page six. Paragraph 4.1.8. Page 6? Yes. Yes. Page 6, paragraph 4.1.8. 4.1.8. Okay. Marot, a notice record as shown on page 6 of Annexia MCC 01 indicate that the said accused was authorized to undertake a learner's license test on 22nd of July 2014. And his test results were recorded as failed at Pragpan Driving License Testing Center by the examiner for driving license identified as Zulu T with the initials TPC with notice infrastructure number 49512 BCW. <laughs> Kubonisa ukuthi uye wayo ibala ebrakban yena akazange abase lapho uye wafeila ebekade ehlolwa uzulu TPC umuntu obekade sebenza laphela the department of license and you have attached the relevant annexure page yes, 6 yes. on MCC1 yes if we may go to page 6 of annexure MCC01 my lot if you check from the uh, top, from the top, it says the learner's particulars. Name is Sibia MS. MS. The identity type that he provided is a RSA ID document. The ID number is 86012159330833. The Learners License Testing Center particulars infrastructure number is 000 
which is Pragpan DLTC. The next row it shows it, it shows the learner's license test particulars. Here it, it says learner's license code. It says motor vehicle, excluding a uh, MC. In this case, it simply means that the learner's license code that he applied qualifies him to drive any motor vehicle except a motorcycle. The test date that was confirmed is 2014-0722. The test time is 11 past 10. The, the test time is the test time that he finished to write is 10:55. Yeah, uh, his test results were recorded as fail. The learner's license test number, which was provided to him when he was applying for an application of learner's license, was 401 uh, 0000 D435. On the next row, it indicates the examiner particulars the examiner particulars who was conducting yes. the class. Yeah. Yes, you don't need to read that into the record. Okay. And there's also the points that you obtained in the different categories. Yes, my lord. My lord, if you can check on the categories, the rule on the rules of the road, there are 30 questions. So he managed to score only 13, and the pass rate is 22. On the road traffic side, there are 30 questions. Uh, here you managed to score 18. Unfortunately, the pass rate is, two, is, two, is 23 points. On the motor vehicle control, there are eight questions. In this case, he managed to get five. Unfortunately, the pass rate is six. Thank you. We, we can then revert back to your affidavit. Paragraph 4.1.9 on page 6. Okay. My Lord, on the same day, the, on the same day, on the 22nd of July 2014, at 1355.09, Natis record as shown on page 7 of Annexia MCC 01 indicate that a Natis transaction 706, which is record pre-booking, was performed on the accused ID number 86012159 The official that had initiated and concluded a Natis transaction 706 on computer workstation ID number 4316003 at Boxback DLTC is identified as BP Melamo with Natis infrastructure number with Natis user number 4009A0J2. Ngalo lelo langa umai kata bala ekata ufeila uye wafaga istrelo uguti ufuna ubala futi kona u leso istrelo uspage ngei 22 ziga July 2014 wa sizwa UBP Molamu yebega te ese box bank. You've just put in record that the date on which he undertook the learner's license was 22 July 2014 in Breakpan DLTC, but at the, on the same day, 22 July 2014, an appointment was made at the Bosbeck DLTC. What does that signify? Uh, after he realized that he failed, my lord, he didn't want to give up, so he proceeded to the, near, to the nearest 
driving license testing center to make a further application. Manjo, who should tin in Jungoba Uti Upale, a box peg, a box peg, a pragban, go to a list, a lossifaway, a box peg. Uti, Jungo Munto begat a better of Faila Yena, why I got the Engas as Missele, as I am a fool, the Ubuti, a Lafele, it however, we are work beggar, why are we stage a set to the Ubuza Ayofaga is fellow, so which I am a pan of food. And in which language was the learner's license test in, in, in Breckban conducted on the 22nd July 2014? Uh, my Lord, uh, in this case on the system is not captured because it was a handwritten learner's license, it was not computerized. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but are you familiar with the questions themselves, the categories that have mentioned, as in which language they are couched? Uh, I know in Sipedi, there's also in the Afrikaans and in English. I'm not sure about other languages. But what we have now, we have a question about Afrikaans. Yes, you can proceed. My Lord, the recorded pre-booking of the said accused is related to a license code 3 application, as shown on page 8 of Annex MCC01. On the 22nd of July 2014, at 7 past 2 in the afternoon, 42nd, a notice record is shown on page 9 of Annexia MCC 01, indicate that a notice transaction 721, which is an application for learner's license, was performed on the accused ID number 86012159330383. A notice transaction 721 is used to record an application for learner's license. The official that initiated and concluded this Notice transaction 721 on computer workstation ID number 4316035 at Boxberg DLTC is identified as Z Sewana with notice user number 4009A0J0. Footy a meaning I know that Langa is 22 got July, Mizuze, A is Combisa, and Yamba were horrible spinning a meaning. We are going to go to Uyawa, Father is 1240. So to visa ukubhala futhi yona leo leo learners license eyikuthi ubekade efisa ukufaka leso ukubhala lapho ebekade esizwa uz tiwana lo bekade esibenzela e box bank My lord the said accused has made a cash payment of 108 rand for learners license application and he was issued with a receipt number 40090 1269PT9 as shown on page 10 of Annexia MCC01. We are going to have a receipt. My Lord, a notice transaction 721 can only be performed if the applicant has, made authori has been authorized to undertake a learner's license test and that the applicant is compelled to make an application in person as prescribed in section 17 and regulation 103 of the national road traffic act as shown on page 5 of annex mcc 01 let us tell you again is tell you to see a power um on to as me said over to your bala elena's license a good tea issue um teto sis again furthermore a notice record as shown on page 11 of annex mcc 01 indicate that the said accused was authorized to undertake a learner's license test on the 2014 0915 and his test results were recorded as passed at Boxberg DLTC by the examiner for driving license identified as Nomberg Trazer ZZ with 90 user number 4009A0CH. Footy Gabonagala Ugutu, we are beggar footy Utenese go to Upalile, gay 15 September 2014, a beggar day a learner's. Able to put in a say good to we are a passer, la bega de etron or number as a Z Z. My lord, if I may allow to quote 
to an extra MCC zero on page 12, just to check how was the, uh, the, the coins that he acquired at Boxback. Uh, for the purpose of record, my lord, from the top it says the learner's particulars, Sibia MS, uh, the identity type is uh, RSA ID document. The ID number is 86012159 uh, The learner's license testing center particulars is infrastructure number is 014618 Boxback DLTC. Uh, on the next row, it shows the learner's license test particulars. The learner's license, the learner's, the, the license code is motor vehicle. In the bracket, it says excluding motorcycle. The test date was on the 15th of September 2014. The test time was from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. The result is passed, authorized, and issued, meaning that the accused passed and the results were authorized and it was issued with the learner's license. The learner's license test number is 4009 0018 BGM. The examiner who was conducting the class at the time, the examiner infrastructure number is 49512 CS3. Uh, the name of the examiner is Nombe Preza ZZ. Uh, the learner's license test could uh, particulars, my lord, if just if, if you were to check under the category of rules of the road, I have already indicated that there are 30 questions. So here he managed to score 23, and the pass rate is 22. The road traffic sign, there are 30 questions. He, he was able to score 27, and the pass rate is 23. The motor vehicle controls is eight questions, and he was able to take to, to, to get total, and the pass rate is six. Manje Eguti e pass rate we go twenty two. Yena women was o eight thirty eminye lande layo ye yama sign one kwa ko uye wa twenty seven. Wa eguti u pass rate kwa go twenty two. Futi e mi ka gugu exceptin senu we moto. Ube kate gune mi buzo e eight uye wa twala u eight eguti pass rate kwa go six. Is there an indication of the language in which the test was conducted? It is not, there's no indication because it was a handwritten learner's license, mm -hmm. not computerized. We are going to na ulbe mi ebelga del seven siwela po utika abu kona 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 waba kaka te kuwa panwa ni computer kaka te kuwa panwa ni sad. Yes, may proceed. Uh, Four point one point sixteen. On on the fifteenth of September, twenty fourteen. At 1355 47 seconds, Natis record as shown on page 13 of Annexure MCC 01 indicate that Natis transaction 722, which is the authorization of learner's license, was initiated and concluded on computer workstation number 43160036 at Boxback GLTC by the official identified as ZC1 uh, with Natis user number 4009A0JZ. We were going to have to go to the Tuana and Uyewa Panangayo, the Olena's license, Lebegate, E. Kishwa, a box. My lord, the said accused has made a case payment of 60 rand for issue of Lena's license certificate, and he was issued with the receipt number 4009012 6B6JZ, as shown on page 14 of Annexure MCC01. We told the Olena's license, Uyewa Koka, Imali, Elingan, 60 rand. That is record, my lord, further as shown on page 15 of Annexure MCC 01, indicate all the applicants that were examined for learner's license testing on 2014 09 test time from 12 o'clock to one o'clock. Uh, 12 uh, 1 
Furthermore, my lord, a search was conducted for learner's license application form completed by the accused in 2014 as mentioned in Regulation 103 of the NRCA Act. And it has not yet been found, notwithstanding Section 78, Subsection 1 of NRTA states that a document purporting to be an extract from or a copy of or any register or record kept in terms of this act and purporting to be certified as such shall in any court and upon all occasion be admissible as evidence and shall be prima facie proof of the matter stated in such document without the production of the original register or record or any certificate, license, other document, microfiche, microfilm, or computerized record for, from of which such extract or copy was made. <coughs> Na so is Tenole, so as yes, Safawa, but as Zan is Tonagale Cordua, which you were Bo Noma, who Fagas, Obunaba Corner, who has the surgeons, so in Candono, Jemo Bufagas, the way with Tibona, who yes, who corner, forty, who are seven Ziswa, Jemoba, Umundu, I got the Fagales was trained. Thank you. That concludes then your testimony as far as MSCB is concerned. Uh, I also want to indicate, my lord, that for the fact that uh, the file was not retrieved uh, uh, in, in relation to section 78 of subsection 1 of NRT 8, I did certify that the electronic information annexed to year to SMCC 01 in relation to the accused are facts and transactions that were registered or recorded or noticed by authorized person in the ordinary course of business as prescribed by the provision of the National Road Traffic Act. Manje again, Jengo ba iguti faila is ange itolwe ea ke umsolwa yogutu waiga tefage le sostredo futu ye wa tina se iguti ui tole le learner's license ye na uti uye wa tata bonke obe gato gupalwe lapa uguti leso stredo siya sayen ziwa futi siya saa tatwa ugu yango mteto sisegelo obe gato gupalwe lapa. Can you just put that page? Okay, it's the relevant page where you make this certification. Okay, the second I David, page twenty-four of twenty-seven. Page <coughs> twenty-four under number nine. Upala paragraph nine. Nine point one. Nine point one. Okay. Right. We've already uh, page nine. We've already dealt with physician Tuli. Perhaps when we return from the long adjournment, you can start at page 11, page paragraph 11. 6. Okay. Inspector of Ntokozi, see Posonga Mapisa. Utuma Sibuya, Sizoya, O page 9, see a boom Tokozi, see Posonga Mapisa. Page 9. Page 9. Page 11. Okay, page 11. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's almost time for the long agenda. Okay. Are we proceeding or are we, are we what, what proceeding? What time now? It's about two, two minutes to one. Yeah, let's come back at two.
In respect of Mtoko Zisi, Sifo, Sifo Zonke Mapisa. See every paragraph to page 11, paragraph 6. Sikulma Manje, Ukufagazi, Baga Mapisa. My Lord, Mtoko Zisi, Sifo Zonke Mapisa, with the ID number 8510046202081. Uh, on the 25th of July 2014, Natis transaction 57 person introduction, uh, which is a transaction that we used to introduce a person on the system, was performed on the accused ID number 8510046202081. On computer workstation ID number 4318007 at Pragpan Registering Authority by the official identified as PL. Mochavo with notice user number 4025F00R. Um, Togo Zese Zipozoinke Mapisa ID number go 85104620281. Uyege, we are going to follow again. Wabono Uguti Gay 25 July 2014. We are going to be able to do this. We are going to be to introduce onto the system a person for the first time who is in position of either the Republic of South Africa or a foreign identification document. And the applicant must present, must be present at the registering authority. Lo muntu lo guamele abe kona la payana uma efaga le sistelo. Lo muntu guamele akipem saumbe i pasila la nem zanz Africa no ma yipi ingwa ki embonisa yo yo guzazisa. Natis record, my lord, further indicate that on the 25th of July 2014, Natis transaction 141 in the brackets is vehicle registration was performed on the accused ID number 85100462020081 on computer workstation ID number 4318008 at Pragpan Registering Authority by official identifies as LEK path with notice user number 4025F009. Na yo e ID number ya ke ya sho leo moto wa egatezo e palisa e pragpan e sizwa umundo obekate ama initials wa ke wo L-E-K pasa is bongo sa ke. Sorry, are you able to go into the system just to, to get the particulars of um, the, the notice particulars of Mr. Mapisa? Okay, I'm looking onto the, I'm, lo I'm, I'm putting the ID number of the Accused eight five one zero zero four six two zero two zero eight one. I will then press enter to see the details. This is the information, my lord, that was. Uh, inputted onto the Nazi system upon the application of of the accused. Can you put them on record? Okay, for the purpose of record, my, my, my lord, the a person's identification particulars, identity type that was produced at the time is RSA ID document. Uh, ID number is 85100462020081. Persons particular. Okay. Okay. My lord, persons particular nationality is South African. Gender is male. The uh, sign name is Mapisa. Initials is MZ. 
the, the full name is written here is Mtoko Sisi. Mtoko Sisi. Date of birth is 1985-1004. The official language of his preference is English. Uh, the registering authority where he's transacting is Nongom. Uh, local locality of record is also in Nongom. The date of change of address is 2015-0213. The status of the person indicated that is still active. Uh, one other thing that I may, I think I missed my lot when I was uh, reading out his initial, his full names is there is another name that is Sipo Zonke. Uh, the cell phone number provided is 078 Yes, that's, that's, that's sufficient. And who they have provided the cell phone number? In this case, my lord is the accused. Le number lo yote mo yana ubani ubani ge yana uti umsolo. Thank you. The rest of the information is not necessary to place on record. If I can then ask you to turn to page twenty-two of your affidavit, paragraph seven point one. Mr. Bongani Sandy Sontanzi. Okay. I see again we have to have a schoolman of Bongani Sandy Sontanzi. My lord Bongani Sandy Sontanzi with ID number 9012026197083. Uh, notice records as shown on Annexure MCC 18 indicate that the accused record with ID number 90. 12026197083 does not exist on the system. Manje ge kuya sho ukuthi ubongani Sandy Sontanzi ID number yakhe u90120261197083 lama records lawa awabonisi inombolo lena yakhe u Ntanzi. What does it mean in simple terms? In simple terms, my lord, it simply means that the, uh, the accused does not have a learner's license or driver's license or infringement notice or any vehicle register under him. Yes, and uh, just lastly, paragraph 8. Okay. Uh, paragraph 8, to BC Cleans Mugube, ID number 85040360580082. Uh, my Lord, Natis record as shown on page 1 of Annexure MCC 14 indicate that the ID number 85040360580082 belongs to Mugube MP, then referred to as an accused. Manjege, we have fundo at Nayo EID number Yake Umube. Going forward, my lord, uh, there is no notice transaction for the accused from the period December 2013 to December 2014. The accused registered his first, vi first vehicle minibus on 2015-04-10, as shown on page 2 of Annexia MCC 14. Manjege, I go into a vela. Haga tuwa 2013 no 2014 Nga yege unube Yena watu na ye ugu palisa Imoto ebe kate kui minibus Wai palisa ngo 2015 Genyanga yesine ngelanga lesume Has any contact number been provided During this transaction? 
Uh, my Lord, if I may, if may, if I may check on the system. Yes. Let me quickly check on the system. Eight five zero four zero three six zero five eight zero eight two. Press enter. Uh, according to the computerized register, that is Natis does not have contact uh, cell phone number for the accused. <laughs> The other particulars, such as the postal okay, and my Lord. physical address. Okay, my Lord. On the person's address particulars, uh, the record that was provided or furnished by the accused is 296 Service Street, Tokoza. The postal code is 1426. The postal code is 1426. Official language of preference is Zulu. Thank you. Do you confirm the correctness of the information you finished in both affidavits? Yes, my lord. Uh, as well as the annexures? Yes, my lord. We have Mumuti on the Indo Panengayo Gulama affidavit, Wakata Wilkinis of Uti Yebo. My Lord, the state begs leave to hand up the computer generated documents that are inextricably interwoven with the affidavits. We we'll therefore request that both affidavits, my Lord, be handed up. The first affidavit dated the 9th of October 2023, consisting of uh, 22 pages, be handed up as exhibit triple A1. Then the second affidavit, consisting of 27 pages, as well as the annexures there too, be handed up as exhibit triple A in brackets two. And that will be the end of this witness evidence. All right. <coughs> yeah, Mr. 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 will cross-examine after you. Yes, indeed. Um, he is requested that we stand down until Monday. Until? Monday for the cross-examination. Oh, that's sure. Yes, we, we have no objection against that. Are you available Monday, sir? Yes, my lord. Where do you live? Around. What's around? Around Pretoria. Monday then.